in each of my opportunities to serve as governor of the state of Missouri, prior to the time when I would be inaugurated, I asked that there be a special service where we would invite the wisdom and the compassion, the forgiveness, and the healing of God into the administration and what we would do. And as I went to participate in the United States Senate in the year 1995 in January, I wanted to somehow make that kind of invitation to the wisdom and integrity and <clears throat> compassion of the Almighty in the way I would serve. And I was a little distressed that in an off year like that, they were going to swear us all in. We had a pretty big class of senators, and there wasn't going to be any opportunity to do that. So my father, who was somewhat feeble uh, at the time in his 80s, had come to Washington. And he agreed that he would spend some time with me on the morning of being sworn in to the United States Senate as a senator to just invite the presence of God, the compassion, the wisdom, the forgiveness, and the uh, understanding and healing of God into, in, in, into, the, into my life and into the lives of those who served with me in my Senate office. We really didn't have a formal setting in which to do this, but we gathered in a, a little house that one of the ministries in Washington made available at the time. And we were there in the morning, and I, I knelt to pray, and the group of people, maybe 15 or 20, not that many, I guess, it was mostly relatives and all, gathered around me to, to, uh, to have a prayer. Uh, my father, who had had a heart attack a couple years earlier and who was failing, uh, he had told my brother that he had tied a knot in the end of his rope and he was going to hang on to see me sworn into the United States Senate. He was sitting in one of these sofas in front of which I was kneeling and others had gathered when we watched my father begin to swing it. Have you ever sat in one of these sofas that seems to go just sort of swallow you up and you, you know they look like they're big and cushiony but they are, they're just they're like well they just you go and you wonder where you went and my dad was reaching swinging his arms to get out of the sofa and, uh, and the others were standing up to and I was kneeling and they were going to offer a prayer and I said to my father you don't have to struggle to stand and pray for me and my father said to me, John, he said, I'm not struggling to stand. I'm struggling to kneel. And my father struggled and rolled out of the sofa onto the floor <laughs> and knelt next to me. And I thought to myself many times since then, there are times when people say that the parents of America should go eyeball to eyeball with their kids or stand chin to chin. But my father chose to be knee to knee with me on the day that I was to be sworn into the United States Senate. He had told me that the spirit of Washington was arrogance and the spirit of Christ was humility and he had urged me to understand that what America needs is humility, not arrogance. And whether you're a Christian or not, I think you can agree with that, that America has a need to understand where it needs help and where it can give help. It was a moment of great impact for me. I was grateful for my father's prayer. I was even more grateful for his prayers when before my father got home the next day, he went to his eternal reward. For he gave his last uh, portion of strength and uh, opportunity to shape his son in a way that said we ought to pray and ask God to bless what we do as it relates to the community in which we live. On a national day of prayer, I think it's appropriate that we consider that kind of admonition as we count our blessings. That we acknowledge that this freedom we enjoy is not something we fabricated. That the founders had it right. This is creator generated and we can guard it and 
we can seek to govern with it, but we didn't grant it. It came from another source. And that we could ask that the Almighty would endow us with a sense of humility to understand when and how we can help others and the way in which we can make it possible for those that God has created to reach the maximum potential that he has placed within them. I thank you. I pray God's rich blessing upon you and upon the United States of America. Good evening. I just want to take this opportunity to welcome you all. Thank you for supporting a country like this. I want to have my husband, Kevin, share the story because he's kind of the main, main part of it. So. It's good to be with the Republicans of Placer County. Marnie and I are from Keller, Texas, but we were married. Oh, no. <laughs> we were married in Monterey, California, though, in 1999, and we lived in Carmel Valley for a good bit. I remember we had gatherings there of all the Republicans in Monterey County. Uh, we called them dates. <laughs> I, I think Clint Eastwood's a Republican, but he never showed up on our dates. So. We, we're truly thrilled to be here. This night has been in the making for us for uh, quite some time, even before I think Placer County knew it was in, in the making. And to explain that, I need to tell you a little story. You see, a couple of, uh, for a couple of decades, I was very busy and very happy and very active in the financial services industry, and that was my career. Uh, in fact, I was very fortunate to have been a founder of the Templeton Private Client Group out of Carmel, and we built a team and managed a lot, of, a lot of money for a lot of wealthy people. And I started during that period a ritual of spending every January 1st in prayer, seeking God to ask Him what I was to do that year. And this year, um, I got something different, something I'd never heard before. I was told uh, very much in my spirit to focus, to take my focus off of me and what I was doing and put my focus on my wife. Uh, this was the year of, the Mar of Marnie, he said to me, and the spotlight was to go on her. 